good afternoon and good night, everybody. And uh, today we have the pleasure to have with us Mei Huang. Uh, Mei Huang is a professor at the University of the Chinese Academy of Science. So let me first briefly introduce our speaker. Uh, Mei Huang ha uh, had her PhD in 2000 from the Institute of High Energy from the uh, Chinese Academy of Science. Then after that, she did a postdoc in Tsinghua University in China. Then he was a visiting scientist at Goethe University in Frankfurt in Germany. And later at the same institute, she became an Alexander von Humboldt Fellow. Uh, then after a couple of years, she became a fellow, a uh, JSPS Fellow at the University of Tokyo. And in 2006, she became an associate professor at Institute of High Energy Physics at the Chinese Academy of Science, China. And in 2009, she became a full professor in the same institute. May is very uh, well known in the field. So she has more than 140 papers in INSPIRE and she sums up more than uh, 4,000 citations. So it's our pleasure to have you today with us, May. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you for agreeing with this a little bit shift hours for the seminar and please go ahead. Okay, so thanks Anna for the invitation. And also I, I checked the link of the website that uh, I found that uh, I know some of you uh, all by papers or by names. So I think uh, many of you are already also the experts in this field. So today I will talk about the QCD matter and the magnetic field. And uh, recently we developed a chiral anomaly transport module so we can trace the generation, the evolution of the chiral anomaly uh, topological charge. And also we uh, can trace the uh, signature of the chiral magnetic effect. So, <clears throat> so firstly, I will talk about uh, some properties under magnetic field. I think this background I can skip because uh, many of you are experts in this field. So, uh, okay, so basically, uh, so the main topic is that uh, uh, the QCD properties and the magnetic fields. So how much we know about uh, the facts. So basically from lattice calculation, we know that uh, at the zero temperature, uh, there is a magnetic effect, magnetic catalysis. And uh, around the TC, we have uh, inverse magnetic catalysis. And uh, also from lattice QCD, so we know that uh, the system has uh, diamagnetism at a low temperature and uh, paramagnetism at a high temperature. And also from lattice QCD that uh, we know that the pion mass uh, and the magnetic field shows that for neutral pion mass, it uh, uh, decreases and uh, for charged pion mass, it's, uh, it increases and then decreases. And also, of course, we, uh, we, we know also from lattice QCD that uh, some properties about the vector, charged vector meson. So whether there is a charged vector meson condensation, so this is also kind of uh, uh, in debate. So, and uh, actually I will talk about that uh, our theoretical understanding on such kind of uh, uh, phenomenology that uh, some of them we can understand, but uh, it, it seems that uh, we cannot uh, understand all of them in one uh, self-consistent framework. So this is uh, just a uh, so in this talk, I will share this, uh, our understanding, our investigations uh, in the theoretical framework. And uh, I will show you that uh, 
uh, we didn't really uh, describe all of them in our framework. So firstly, I think this, uh, everybody knows that uh, this uh, magnetic catalysis at the zero temperature, this actually was uh, found by, by many groups uh, in 1980s, even 1990s. So this is actually can be simply calculated in the framework of NGL model. So uh, basically, this is a kind of a feature that uh, if you have a magnetic field in the field, then uh, in the system, then there will be de develop a kind of a quark mass, and this is a, and the mass will increase with magnetic field. And then in uh, tw in 2012, so this uh, Bani and uh, their collaborators from Regensburg and uh, a Regensburg group, uh, they found that uh, they confirmed this uh, magnetic catalysis at zero temperature, but they found that uh, at the at the finite temperature and around the TC, so this critical temperature for chiral phase transition decreases with uh, magnetic field. So of course this uh, uh, behavior actually caused uh, many uh, interest because it's kind of not understood in usual, in normal uh, framework because at the zero temperature, if this, uh, uh, if we have a magnetic catalysis, naively we should expect that the TC also increases with the magnetic field. But uh, something happens around the TC so that uh, this critical temperature decreases with the magnetic field. So after this work, I think uh, it attracts a lot of uh, in interest to understand this phenomena. So of course there are many kind of uh, <clears throat> mechanism. For example, this uh, uh, contribution from neutral pions proposed by Fukushima and uh, Hidaka, and also uh, this uh, uh, framework, this uh, understandings that uh, this may be caused by sequarks and the uh, polyac loop holomony. So this is by, I think this is by Natis people. And uh, we also uh, uh, proposed this chironic imbalance. Uh, this is, uh, if, you, if we have a mu5, then this will also cause this inverse magnetic catalysis. And, uh, and of course, um, later, we have this anomalous magnetic moment and also this running coupling constant and so on. So this is uh, to understand this in inverse magnetic catalysis. And also for lattice QCD, they showed that uh, at, uh, zero, at a low temperature, the system exhibits this uh, diamagnetism. So they calculated this uh, magnetic uh, susceptibility, it shows that uh, it is uh, a negative, small negative at a low temperature, but uh, it is uh, positive at a high temperature. So basically it means that uh, the system shows uh, uh, diamag diamagnetism at a low temperature, but uh, pyromagnetism at a high temperature. So of course, for the paramagnetism, it is easy to understand that because uh, uh, if we put uh, the quarks, uh, the spin in under this magnetic field, so it will align to, uh, along this magnetic field. So this basically is the, this will cause the paramagnetism. So this is easy to understand. But for this uh, uh, no temperature region, this diamagnetism is not easy to understand. <clears throat> uh, 
and also for this uh, uh, meson mass under magnetic field. So from if for point particle, so we have this relation, and then we can have a, a charged pion mass, charged meson mass uh, splitting and the magnetic field. So for example, this uh, charged pion will become heavier, and the charged uh, row meson will become lighter. And maybe, so this, uh, um, Maxim Chanadob showed that, uh, proposed that uh, at the uh, high magnetic field, this charged row meson will become zero and then will form condensation. So he proposed this uh, superconductor of rho and the magnetic field. Of course, this also attracts uh, some interest. <clears throat> And uh, for uh, some lattice calculations, for example, uh, this Dinghen Tong's group from uh, Central China University, Normal University in Wuhan, and uh, they showed that uh, the neutral pion mass uh, decreases with magnetic field. And uh, for the charged pion mass, it firstly increases and then reaches maximum around the, at around the six, uh, 0 0.6 uh, GeV square, and then decreases. So this is, uh, mm, it's, for example, uh, this is not uh, well understood in, at least in the framework of NGL model because um, uh, we can do some calculations and uh, it is not uh, far away from point uh, particle behavior, but uh, this behavior is uh, far away from point uh, particle uh, behaviors. So uh, if we have this magnetic field, so we know that uh, there is uh, there will be non-down levels and uh, so this, uh, uh, integration, this integral for the momentum will become this uh, summation for non-down level. So that's actually, if you can see that uh, this is uh, how the spins uh, and uh, this, uh, this north non-down level, this uh, spin up. So except that this north non-down level uh, from one, from n equal to one, spin one, uh, spin up and spin down uh, particles, uh, they will nine together, uh, but except this uh, zeros non down level. <clears throat> okay, in the framework of uh, uh, NGL models, we can do the calculation. So, uh, so this is a kind of standard uh, calculation. So we can, uh, do this RPA, RPA. So uh, from this uh, quark loops, we can extract the pion mass and uh, also the pion decay constant. So this is uh, the um, calculation that uh, for, uh, this is for the quark mass. So the quark mass increases with magnetic field and uh, this shows uh, magnetic catalysis. And uh, for the neutral, for the sigma meson, it increases with magnetic field. But uh, for point particle, for neutral uh, sigma meson, it keeps, uh, keeps uh, a constant. And uh, for the neutral pion, uh, this, uh, this mass decreases a little bit and then increases. But for charged pion mass, it increases and and much more than the point particle like this. So this is in the RPA calculation calculation in the framework of NGL model. And we also did the uh, the charged vector meson, and we found that uh, this charged row 
uh, decreases with magnetic field and it will drop to zero at around the point two. And this is actually much faster than point-like uh, calculation, a uh, point-like particle. And uh, for the recently, I think there is a paper from your uh, one of your group, and uh, 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 from Scotcola, Professor Scotcola, and uh, they considered this gauge invariance and the Schwinger phase and uh, And uh, uh, it shows that uh, the charged row meson uh, uh, shows uh, such kind of behavior. This is uh, much different from this, uh, from our calculation with RPA. So because because for charged particle, uh, when when we do the calculation, there is a shrink phase. So it's of course very difficult to deal with this this part. I actually, I didn't, uh, uh, we didn't really uh, uh, copy this result yet. So we, we don't, we don't, I don't understand uh, so much. So why this string phase will affect so much on the pole mass? So maybe uh, if some authors are here, maybe we can discuss later. And uh, so we, uh, this is, uh, we consider the quark loop polarization. So we can get this magnetic catalysis and the Zeeman splitting for charged meson. And uh, in this framework, we can also get this vacuum superconductor. But of course, this is uh, in doubt because maybe we didn't consider fully the Schwing free phase. Uh, but uh, uh, apart from that, we also consider this anomalous magnetic moment, of course, because this is driven by chirosymmetry breaking. So basically, if you have a chirosymmetry breaking, this uh, will spontaneously induce this anomalous magnetic moment of quarks. This is uh, in pro this is uh, showed in these papers. So basically. This is naturally, I mean, naturally, you should take into account the effect of AMM. So we take into account of this AMM, and then uh, we can see that uh, this AMM effect will affect this, uh, uh, this uh, energy level splitting. For example, uh, this uh, spin up, spin down quarks. Uh, they will split at uh, the number of nails. So this, of course, will affect uh, the mass. So for example, uh, we can get this uh, inverse magnetic catalysis we, if we consider this uh, AMM effect. But if we have this IMC, then we get uh, this uh, uh, pyromagnetism. So basically, when we calculate this uh, magnetic susceptibility, so for example, this, uh, so this IMC effect will induce this uh, pyromagnetism, and uh, the pion mass, neutral pion mass will uh, decreases, and the charged pion mass will increases, but uh, without this non-nomatonic uh, behavior. And then we can also consider this tensor type spin polarization NGR model. So basically, we add this tensor induction here. This is a little bit different from this AMM, so it looks similar. But the effect a little bit different because uh, it affects this uh, uh, energy dispersion relation a little bit different. So you. You can see what's the difference here. So with this, we can compile these uh, results. Uh, this uh, tensor spin polarization enhances this magnetic catalysis, while this AMM induces magnetic inhibition. 
So that will induce this uh, inverse magnetic catalysis. So this is the difference between this AMM and this tensor, tensor interaction. So this, uh, I showed this uh, uh, energy level here. So you can see immediately, uh, explicitly, how this, uh, how the difference between this tensor polarization and the, and the AMM. So basically, we got this tensor interaction will induce diamagnetism, but the AMM induces paramagnetism. And for this tensor spin polarization, so we get this neutral pile mass, uh, both neutral and the charged pile mass increases with the magnetic field. So anyway, from this study, we found that uh, we have this uh, contradiction between diamagnetism and the IMC. So basically, if we have this, uh, if we have a mechanism that we can have this inverse magnet magnetic catalysis or magnetic inhibition, then we will get this diamag we will get this paramagnetism rather than this diamagnetism. But if we can get this diamagnetism, then we will have this magnetic catalysis. So this is a kind of uh, a funding that uh, in this framework, uh, there is a contradiction to uh, between this uh, diamagnetism and the IMC. So this is uh, uh, consider this AMM effect and the tensor type interaction. And the recently we also considered this uh, uh, Ion fluctuations. Of course, this is proposed by Fukushima. And uh, in this work, we considered the, both uh, the neutral pion fluctuation and also the charged pion fluctuation. And again, we found some contradiction because uh, I will not show these uh, details here uh, because uh, uh, this paper may be appear next uh, month. And uh, from our uh, investigation that we found that uh, uh, that uh, if we only consider this pi zero fluctuation, then we will get uh, this uh, for uh, for neutral pi on mass. Okay, so, so we will get this IMC. So basically, the critical temperature decreases with magnetic field. But at the same time, if we have uh, uh, this, if we only consider this uh, neutral pion fluctuations, then we will get this uh, paramagnetism. So basically, so uh, so this is uh, corresponding to this. So basically, if we have uh, IMC, we will have uh, paramagnetism. But uh, when we consider both. Because of this we are using um, we are using a uh, weak field uh, uh, expansion, and uh, so we will see that uh, for if we consider both uh, basically neutral and the charged pion fluctuation, then this uh, uh, TC will increases with the magnetic field. Basically, we will get uh, MC. Magnetic catalysis also at around the TC. And uh, however, in this case, we can get this uh, diamagnetism. Well, this is not so much because, uh, because uh, at a uh, low temperature, uh, we didn't uh, get uh, a diamagnet, uh, explicit diamagnetism. Uh, but then we get uh, this paramagnetism. So, Again, it seems that uh, we cannot get uh, uh, 
uh, this uh, IMC together with biomagnetism. Oh, by the way, we also uh, checked this running coupling effect. And uh, if we consider running coupling, this uh, uh, TC will, in, will decrease with the magnetic field. But uh, we cannot get uh, a diamagnetism. So it seems that uh, here now, basically, uh, we don't have a self-consistent uh, theoretical framework that we can get uh, both correct. So we can get uh, IMC together with uh, diamagnetism. So this is basically the current uh, theoretical framework. And also in our current uh, um, framework that we cannot get uh, non-monotonic behavior for charged pion mass. So this neutral pion mass can decrease with the magnetic field. But uh, for charged pion mass, so we cannot get this uh, non-monotonic behavior basically increases firstly and then decreases. So we don't know, I mean, what happens there. So this is uh, the situation for, for our investigations. So basically we tried many things, but uh, we didn't uh, get uh, this, uh, I mean, we didn't uh, get all this effect, or all this uh, behavior right in this uh, in one theoretical in one systematic uh, framework so this is the situation so now come to this uh, uh, cme effect so for this cme that uh, you know that uh, this is proposed by Kazif, uh, dima kazif and uh, this is because due to this QCD vacuum and uh, for this non-trivial topological structure and uh, when, the, uh, when the Chen Simmons number changes from one number to another through instant or sphenoron transition, so we can have this uh, chironity imbalance. So this is... Uh, this is the uh, motivation of this uh, uh, chironity imbalance and uh, CME. I and mean, when we have this magnetic field and uh, together with this phenomenon transition and uh, this uh, uh, U-quark and the D-quark will uh, move along, one move along the magnetic field and the uh, D-quark will move back along this uh, opposite direction along the magnetic field. So this will, uh, we can observe this chiromagnetic effect. This is uh, proposed in 2008. Or, yeah, it's already more than 15 years. So of course, I mean, uh, from experiment, I think there are many uh, efforts to search this chiromagnetic effect. And uh, in 2009, so they observed such kind of uh, chiromagnetic effect or charge separation effect. But uh, uh, later on, there are some debates on this uh, observation because uh, there is a huge, huge uh, background so this, of course, uh, still under investigation from uh, experiment. Uh, but uh, uh, we recently developed a kind of uh, chiral anomaly transport. So we, uh, firstly, this uh, mu5, this uh, chironity imbalance, are uh, induced by the spectrum transition. Of course, we, only, we can only understand this uh, chironity imbalance uh, event by event or in one domain. I mean, because uh, uh, this is a kind of local imbalance, but in total, we globally, there is no such kind of imbalance. So uh, in one domain or in one event, 
uh, this is a uh, have ion collisions event by event. So in one event, we have uh, one mu five. And uh, in another event, we may have uh, minus mu five. So this, uh, we can do some calculations that uh, uh, from high ion conditions, we can estimate this uh, temperature. So this, uh, because this mu five is uh, dependent on this uh, spectral transition rate, and the spectral transition rate is uh, uh, can be deduced uh, from this, uh, uh, can be calculated by some framework. And uh, actually, it was already calculated by many people. And uh, but with uh, uh, magnetic field, it's a little bit uh, difficult. But one can estimate that. Uh, so it always comes from by E B square or E B times T square. So in this case, so we can we can. Uh, guess that this mu five is uh, proportional to this temperature or this square of EB. So this why, so we can put this uh, chiral anomaly uh, from the very beginning. So this, this is our uh, chiral anomaly transport that we um, developed, developed from this, based on this AM, T framework. So this is uh, uh, original AMPT. So after this hygiene initial conditions, uh, this this is a uh, uh, previous one. So we modify this part. So this part uh, we include this initial uh, chiral anomaly topological charge, and then also we consider this uh, magnetic field. So initially, we can have this uh, in this magnetic field, and then we assume that uh, this magnetic field evolves with time like this, and then we solve this. Uh, so we input all these initial conditions together with uh, chiral anomaly charge and the magnetic field uh, into this uh, chiral kinetic equation. So this is a chiral kinetic equation. So we solve this chiral kinetic equation. Then we will get this charge separation. And then freeze out to the observer. And then we can observe this correlation, two particle correlation. And then we can extract this data gamma. This is, this is the difference between opposite and the same charge correlation and uh, the same charge uh, correlation. And then we can uh, also extract this background. So this background, we can put a mu five equal to zero, then we can get this background. And uh, this is uh, this delta gamma, and this is the FCME, this ratio. This also can be measured from experiment. So this is our result. So this is our input that, uh, of course, this input uh, uh, we mm, extract from the from the data from some data that uh, this mu five is a function of temperature and the square of E B, and uh, mm, this temperature is of course a centrality dependence, and. Uh, this magnetic field also centrality dependent. So this temperature, this centrality dependence of temperature, so we can show here. So this is the temperature dependence. So in the central, uh, for central condition, the temperature is higher. And uh, for uh, peripheral condition, this temperature is lower. So we can have such kind of behavior. And with this input, and then we can do this uh, chiral anomaly transport. And we can say explicitly how this charge separation developed. So this, at the very beginning, this is a kind of uh, symmetric. And uh, with the time evolve, so we can observe such kind of uh, charge separation. So this is uh, for different uh, 
This is for opposite charge, and this is for positive charge. And this, uh, for example, this uh, green is like a jade. Uh, it's like a jewelry. It looks quite beautiful. And also, we calculate this um, two particle correlation and compare with uh, star data and also with uh, previous AMPT. So this AMPT result is uh, uh, they input this uh, N5, N5. Uh, no, they input this difference between uh, charges. So, uh, so basically, they didn't consider the evolution of the chiral anomaly, uh, chiral anomaly charge. So, but we can compare that that our result is much more, uh, much better, in agreement with the data star data. And without mu five, uh, this dash the nine is for, basically for the background. So if we if mu5 is zero, so you can also get a similar, get a similar uh, behavior for all the two particle correlations. And then we extract this F, this ratio, and this ratio also agree with uh, uh, star data quite well. So this is a uh, uh, framework for the a uh, chiral anomaly transport. Okay, so maybe I stop here for the talk and uh, maybe we leave some uh, time for the discussion. Maybe I think for the calculation, we didn't consider this uh, gauge invariance and the Schwinger faces. So if some authors are in the audience, maybe uh, they can, uh, give us some suggestions and uh, discussions. So that's all, Anna. Thank you very much, May, for the very nice talk, very nice reading, very nice uh, news. So now we open for questions. Christian? Uh, thank you, thank you very much for the, for the talk. Um, the, this essence of the of the chiral chemical potential, uh, which is the range of values uh, you you are expecting for the temp uh, magnetic field? Because I I suppose it's not valid. I mean, if magnetic field is zero, uh, you you don't have this. You don't expect to have this chemical potential. So I, I suppose it's it's. Uh, oh, you mean this one? Yes. Uh, if magnetic field is zero, so but still we have for central condition, for example, mm -hmm. so magne magnetic field is zero in the central for central condition, but the yeah. temperature is high, so still we can have this uh, FCM this uh, CME effect. Uh, okay, for for there's phalerons, because there's there's phalerons. Is that the reason? Phalerons, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is a phenomenal transition uh, rate. I mean, depend both on temperature and the magnetic field. So for example, here, so if uh, magnetic field is zero, you can also have this phenomenal transition rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I ask you something? Uh, in this model of, um, when you include in Nambu journal a senior model, uh, the tensor part. Oh, the tensor part, okay. The tensor part, yes. You, the, uh, so what, how do you, you extract, uh, or how do you, you, you get the values of the, the coupling of the tensor part? You minimize uh, with respect to the, uh, I, I suppose the, the, the vacuum expectation value of the, of the polarization, Quark, uh, quark, um, the fermion polarization uh, function, uh, the, the, the susceptibility, the psi bar, sigma three psi, or just you put uh, some values for the GT. Yeah, it's a kind of a free parameter. 
in principle, of course, I mean, we can have all these relations, I mean, from fears transformation mm -hmm. uh, from this uh, current current interaction. So from QCD, basically, we can uh, we can divide all these relations. I mean, this uh, scanner, this interaction in scanner, tensor, vector, mm -hmm. we can have all the uh, relations. So this GT uh, might be smaller than this uh, GS. No. I, I forgot this number, but uh, in principle, should it be a venue. But in our calculation, uh, we choose this uh, point, uh, seven, point is basically three, three fourths. But haven't you uh, thought, in, for example, in expand the, the, this uh, interaction term in, in, in this vacuum expectation value? Because at finite magnetic field, uh, the wave uh, psi bar, uh, sigma psi is different from zero. So maybe this, this can uh, uh, minimize the potential, can give uh, uh, the value of the GT. Or not. In the in, in the same way, you 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 minimize uh, the potential with the yes the, with the scalar uh, part yeah with the fermion condensate psi bar psi. Is it possible to do the same with the tensor part psi bar sigma three psi? Oh, you mean this one? Okay, this is uh, okay. Moment. I think it's in principle it it is doable. I think. Uh, I mean, because you have only uh, QQ bar condensation and the tensor, and this tensor condensation, you have mm. you needed to uh, find these two minimums, right? Mm. I think in principle it's doable. Yeah. Okay. But for this kappa, for this AMM, this is a kind of uh, given, given yeah. value because yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is given. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Alejandro. Thanks, and thanks, May. Uh, nice review. I wanted to go back to your original or to the first part of your talk. Um, regarding the masses of the of the neutral ions, just just to uh, set up the discussion, you uh, uh, mentioned that uh, it, it is not monotonic. Uh, this this one exactly, and um, you also mentioned that you did the calculation for low values of the magnetic field. In other words, you you did the uh, this uh, small field approximation. Is that what you did? Oh, for this we uh, we did both actually. For this for this work we did the uh, uh, this uh, uh, down level this calculation, and we also did this uh, weak magnetic field expansion calculation, and uh, these two methods gave uh, the same result. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. you also mentioned that you tried some uh, coupling which was uh, magnetic field dependent to uh, improve the calculation. Yes, uh, that one we I didn't uh, uh, put here, but uh, yeah, but in one of these paper we showed uh, some coupling uh, constant uh, uh, calculation. Uh -huh. I, mean, I think maybe in another paper, in another paper maybe with the maximum channel top, maybe I forgot. Okay. But uh, yeah, we checked that uh, part. The, the reason I'm asking is, and I perhaps uh, uh, want to take this chance to start up some sort of a discussion. 
I've been working on this um, problem together with some of the colleagues here by mm -hmm. present, uh, Anna, uh, um, uh, Christian, and uh, and uh, Ricardo, and also Javier, who's uh, joining us here. And see, I, I want to see if I can um, perhaps get your opinion about mm -hmm. this, uh, this kind of behavior. Uh, what we have found, and we are well, working on the draft and probably will be out by next week, mm -hmm. is that it, there are several ingredients that need to be accounted for self-consistently. Self Here, I just want to mention that uh, Norberto has done very extensive work on that as well, and he also has a similar point of view uh, from my mm -hmm. uh, perspective. And see, this is a, a self-consistent kind of problem in other words, uh, it's not, it's difficult to understand the behavior of a non-point like particle, neutral particle uh, subject to QCD interactions such that the, like, like the neutral pion. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense, that it seems that everything is coupled to, 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 to the, to the, uh, you see, it's, it's like uh, every charged particle uh, influences the, the, the behavior of the neutral pion. So if the charged particle is interacting with quarks, then you need to get in, to take into account the mass of the quarks mm -hmm. uh, as a function of magnetic field. If you are in a given framework, uh, either QCD or some effective model, then mm -hmm. the degrees of freedom also influence and they go back and forth in such a way that uh, the change of one of the masses with ma ma the magnetic field influences the other one. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to hear your perspective and perhaps uh, also listen to some uh, other experts' opinion. Um, it seems that the problem may not be solved unless you account for all of these degrees of freedom simultaneously. And then you solve for all of the masses in a given framework, say an effective model, um, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 you know, they, they talk to each other all the times. So what's your opinion? So you mean you consider this uh, interaction between pion, pions? Neutral pion and the charged pion. Well, you see, um, we're working in the in the just to make um, uh, the point clearer, uh, uh, in the sense that it's a it's a simple model which is really normalizable. That we're working on the linear sigma model SU two mm -hmm. cross SU two sigma mm -hmm. model, which is a small uh, number of degrees of freedom. Our findings point out to the fact that you need to take into account uh, self consistently the way all of the um, uh, particle content of the model behaves as, as a function of a magnetic field. So um, have you thought about that? Have you thought about uh, a, a way of, um, you know, framing the, the, the calculation in such a way that you can make this crosstalk between the behavior of the different degrees of freedom in the model? I know that you're working with the NGA, that, that, that's true, but... Uh, yeah, in the NGA model, yes, we actually recent work, we kind of uh, are doing this uh, in this way that, uh, so we have this uh, fluctuations of uh, neutral pion and uh, charged pions, but we don't, uh, we didn't uh, include the interaction between neutral pion and uh, charged pions. Mm -hmm. But for linear sigma model, I mean, so you get uh, uh, quite a different behavior from the charged uh, point particle behavior. No, we get we get the the the, the behavior given by uh, the lattice group by Ding and and the collaborators that you have quoted. But, really? but the only way to do it is to account for all of these. Uh, uh, but, 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 what do you mean exactly, Alejandro? Can you show uh, me? Can you, you mean show this, the... that is a result uh, by Ding Hen Tong? Right. You mean including uh, both neutral and the charged pion mass? You get the uh, same both, correct? Right. And, on, and oh, you also, get this there is, a, there is the, the, the left uh, panel. Uh, uh, next and, panel, we also get correct uh, if we include uh, this uh, pion fluctuations. Okay, so that's that's enough for your uh, for your uh, framework. Yeah, for neutral I, pion. I, I didn't understand. Okay, so I understand now what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, neutral pion is fine. That uh, if we include uh, pion fluctuations, 
we can get this uh, uh, neutral pion mass behavior correctly. But this is a puzzle uh, because we never get such kind of non-monotonic uh, behavior. I see, I see. So I in either model, I mean, we use the many, but uh, we never get uh, such kind of behavior. Okay. 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 May I comment a bit? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, well, of course, uh, we are working in Napo Senior and we cannot go as far as 3.5 GB square. So, I mean, for us, it's hard to, to go beyond 1 GB square, say. Uh, we found that the mixing would, because in principle, when you switch on the magnetic field, all the different particles uh, mix up, I mean, with the different spin and ice spin mix up. So in principle, you have uh, the pion, which is mixed with the row and the row, which is mixed with the axials. So because in principle, this is of course forbidden for a thermagnetic field, but when you switch on the magnetic field, these this mixings are allowed. And we found that when you include the row and the axial mixing, we are able to get the degrees of the pi zero mass with the magnetic field, which is in reasonable agreement with the lattice QCD. Mm -hmm. For the charge pion, we found that, uh, uh, in, well, it depends a bit on the parametrization and and so on. So we, we, we find some, by, some how to say, uh, some tendency to some non-monotonic behavior, not as such big as they found in the in lattice, but uh, if, if, for example, if you don't include include a mixing with the row and the axial, the, the this uh, in in this in the left, I'm sorry, in the right panel, you. The, the, the result you get is that instead of being a decrease, as you have, you have an increase. So I mean that m squared minus m squared at b equal to zero goes up in the number of in your model. So oh, that's goes, very nice to know that. So, so, it, so it goes well above the, 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 the point-like particle, say. Mm -hmm. When you include the row and the axial, when you include the row, doesn't change much when you include the axial. You tend to have a decrease, so it's not enough to to, re, to reproduce the, the lattice result. But there is a tendency, say. So, in a way, there is kind of a between the the axials and the row and the ions, the charge. So, it, it's mainly you have two channels, and they tell they tend to. Oh. To go one against the other, so it goes something like this. So, it, in a way, the, the lowest state tend to get lower as you increase the magnetic field. Is what I mean. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a very good news to us. I so, mean... so it's kind of a repulsion between the the axial and the and the pion. So the as you increase the magnetic field, so then you get some something similar. But again. I cannot go uh, above, uh, the say, point, or say, point eight or one should be square. So mm -hmm. I cannot guarantee that it goes all the way up to three point one should be square. Really for them. So you are uh, using angel model and including this uh, row and the actual. Uh, yeah, yeah, including everything. I, I, yeah, I included all the mixings. Okay, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah, that's very yeah. nice work. So it's yeah. uh, in the archive or it's uh, in preparation? Uh, well, well, the one with the row is in the archive. The mm -hmm. other is, is, it will be, well, I get a talk in Trento or that, but uh, it will be in the archives maybe in three weeks or two or three weeks. Okay. Yeah. I will. With the, the, one, the one with the archive. And uh, since you mentioned this, our work in, on the shrinker phases, maybe I can comment a bit yeah. on that. The thing is that uh, in your work, you treat uh, the RPA assuming that the self-energy is basically diagonal in momentum space, mm -hmm. right? 
And the, the, thing, the problem is that when you have a, a, magnetic, uh, I'm sorry, a magnetic field, due to the Schwinger phase, uh, the self energy is not a translational invariant. Mm -hmm. So this means that, the, in a way, when you, when you do the RPA, what you do to iterate the self energy, you mm -hmm. have the self energy, self energy square, self energy cube, and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And then the sum, mm -hmm. you do one minus G self energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do to, to do this, this series, the the self energy has to be diagonal, because other, otherwise you are multiplying matrices and you don't know how to invert matrices. Mm -hmm. See, so it has to be diagonal, and the problem is that the self energy is not diagonal in moment of space. So you have to use a different basis, and this is Ritus basis. You okay. have to go to the re, you have to go to the Ritus basis, mm -hmm. and and this is due. I mean, this is this is due to the non-diagonal character or nature due to the sugar phase. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we try to explain this in this, in this paper you are showing. Maybe it's a bit too long and it's a bit too hard to understand. But yeah, uh, because uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah. uh, we have a section where we, we we took a very simple interaction pi on by quark quark interaction. And we show that you calculate the, the self energy mm -hmm. just before iterating, because doing before doing RPA. In order to diagonalize the self energy, you have to go to a Ritus space. Mm -hmm. We show that it's not diagonal in moment of space. And this is the whole thing. I mean Yeah, because naively uh, I expect that this phase, this is a phase. We are not go to the pole, so this is. Uh, oh yeah, my yeah, yeah but point. the the problem is that uh, you know you have something in order to calculate mass, pole mass, you have to invert the quark propagator, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and unfortunately, one doesn't know how to invert a matrix unless it is diagonal. Okay. <laughs> so. And the metric, the self energy, or if you, if you like, the quark propagator is not diagonal in momentum space. Mm -hmm. And if you want to invert it, you have to go to a basis in which it is diagonal, because otherwise you don't know how to diagonalize. You need to invert it. OK, good. Yeah, so I will then your paper. And uh, if I have some okay. questions, I will please, ask you. Please, please, please. Maybe I, I, I send I, a student I, to you and to learn this uh, yeah, I will. I will be very happy to, to, to discuss with you. I mean, I will really be very happy to discuss with you. Or maybe I, mean, I invite you, you and, uh, visit uh, our group. OK. Next year. Uh, with you <laughs> and, of course, and the rest of the audience. I mean, well, well, I think we have discussion with many of, of the people here, so. OK, okay. good. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Ricardo. Are you hearing me now? Uh, yeah. Yes, I can yeah. hear you. How are you? Thank you for your talk, May. And uh, I have a, I have some a questions about um when you work with this anomalous magnetic moment there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have seen the amplitudes of the magnet fields that you show to us, and uh, I have two questions. Usually when we include this AMM on the game, we play, um, it's like a, a, a Schwinger ansatz, right? Mm -hmm. And we know from QED that it's valid for weak magnet field. Mm -hmm. This is my first question. How is the, the criteria to extend to 1 GV square, the calculation in NJL? And okay. the second question, Mm -hmm. And the second question is, if you have some criteria to determine the value of this kappa for the constant IMMM, I have seen proportional to the condensate, but if you have some criteria to, oh, can be in this window or something, or it's a free parameter. Yeah, okay. So maybe I firstly answer your second question. So this is actually, uh, uh, we have, actually there are several, kind of, uh, uh, how to say, choices. So uh, one is for this uh, kappa is a constant. So this is uh, basically from this nucleon uh, AMM. 
And then you can extract this uh, U quark and D quark as AMM. So this is one option. And uh, our, <clears throat> our, uh, some, our option, so we uh, take this uh, as a function of uh, uh, a proportional to this uh, condensation or proportional to this uh, sigma square. So this is actually, so of course we don't know the behavior. So we, one of my students, this new fan, he did the calculation for QED, and uh, then he found that uh, this, uh, uh, for QED, this AMM, this kappa, is proportional to this uh, M square. So then we kind of bravely extend to QCD. So then we took uh, for sigma square. So this is actually based on his uh, a small paper uh, for QED because we don't know how to calculate uh, for QCD. And uh, then this uh, uh, Mamiya, uh, he is a postdoc and he extended to uh, compare with Natis data. And then um, it seems that this uh, proportional to sigma square behavior is actually quite well. I mean, can be extracted uh, quite well. Or in agreement, uh, Natis data quite well. Okay. So this is why we think that maybe this uh, sigma square behavior might make sense. Okay. This oh, we is... don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. But if you plug Which temperature, one? if you plug temperature, it's it seems to be a crossover or change for a further order phase transition. Uh, for uh, okay. So basically, this sigma will be kind of self consistently solved by this gap equation. Uh, basically, depending on this temperature. And the first order phase transition, let me see. I think we uh, discussed this uh, uh, this temperature, this uh, second order or oh, crossover or second first order phase transition in this paper carefully. Uh, <clears throat> one of the three actually adopted the uh, the regularization regularization framework. Because uh, whether it's crossover or cross-order phase transition depends much on this uh, regularization framework. Uh, I I couldn't remember whether it's uh, crossover or I think it's a uh, crossover in when we include this uh, this kind of kappa. Okay, for the for the for the magnet fields amplitudes that you can trust in NGL model, it's a crossover if you look for large data, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but for details, I think it's uh, here in this paper. Okay. Yeah. I remember it's a crossover. Yeah. Your set, your first question, what's that? I forgot. It, uh, it was about, uh, because when we, usually when people plug uh, magnet, anomalous magnet moment, we follow mm -hmm. the Schrodinger ansatz. The thing QED oh, is oh. 24 is small amplitudes of the magnet fields. So what's okay, okay. the criteria to extend NJL into 1 GV square? Yeah, this actually, we cannot uh, guarantee for that. I mean, it's just a very brief uh, extension, I would say. It's not uh, self-consistently to take into account that part. Yeah, okay. it's kind of okay. a choice. Yeah, okay, thank, thank you for asking. Oh, thank you. Yeah, okay. okay. Anna, may I have another fast question? Uh -huh. yes, uh, do, do, um, do you have time, May? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, it took me just ahead. quick. Um, I, I'm I'm really interested in include in going to beyond. If you feel like you include meson fluctuations on the game mm -hmm. in the end of the talk. So my point is, if you when you include neutron pion in mm -hmm. meson fluctuations, the results are under control. Mm -hmm. But when you put uh, charge pions there, uh, the, the, the result changes a lot. Mm -hmm. It can be probably the treatment of the Schwinger phase also there. Sorry, neutral pion, you mean? Because when you put neutron, with meson fluctuations, only neutron pions, the result mm -hmm. seems to be under control. Yeah, neutral pion, because, charge, yeah. yeah. But when you include charge at once, the result changes a lot. Cannot be related to the treatment of the Schwinger phase. Yeah, but uh, from uh, Nobater's uh, results, 
for pion, charged pion, it seems uh, very close to this point particle yeah. uh, result. So for charged pion, maybe, maybe, I don't know, of course, I think nobody should be the expert for this question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's true. I mean, this, uh, uh, in general, for charged pions, you get results which are quite similar to the point like, I mean, it's, it's hard to get very away from the point like. Mm. Yeah. Essentially because the, the thing is that the, the, the energy is the square root of the mass plus EV square. I'm, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. mass square plus EV. Mm -hmm. And as you increase the magnetic field, of course, EV dominates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if there is a change on the mass square, I mean it doesn't change much. So it's it's, it's very similar to to a point like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You have some fluctuation, but uh, it's it's not it's not very different. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you include, uh, uh, one has to say that when you include uh, fluctuation, you have to integrate or sum over all momentum or Landau levels. And I don't know very well how you do that. I mean, I'm actually, I'm curious. Yeah, we will have <laughs> this paper maybe maybe several weeks later. Yeah, yeah. we'll show up. Because we'll... uh, for the, for, for, yeah. I understand that for, the, for a neutral pion, you integrate over all the possible momentum mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the neutral pion, right? I mean, you have a kind of pion loop, so you have to integrate over. Now, uh, uh, for the charge pion, you have to sum over all the known levels, and then yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, up yeah. to some kind of another level, with kind of cut over there, but uh, that doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, but uh, we didn't for okay. sure. We didn't consider this showing the phase for charge the pion. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Good. Yeah. Maybe in the future we can improve this part together with you, mm -hmm. with your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, maybe good. I send a student to okay. you, to your group. <laughs> yeah, okay. So right. anyway, I would like to thank you. And also, I sincerely invite you to visit my group at the UCAS in the future. And okay, uh, I wish we will have some collaborations in the, in the future. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much, May. Now we stop. Thank you. Let's, let's thank May again. So... Okay, thank you all. Thank you all for your... I will, I will, stop, I will stop recording now. <laughs>